When encoding for uploading to user-generated content sites like YouTube or Vimeo, understand that your goal is producing a high-quality file for the subsequent re-encode that all these sites perform to produce footage for distribution. You're not producing the file for final form. So, your goal is to upload a very good quality video to serve as a high quality starting point for the online encoding tool. You also don't want the upload to take forever, so you want a reasonably compact file, say in the 10 to 15 megabits per second range. And you can't exceed upload limits of the site, usually between 500 megabytes and 1 gigabyte. You also want to produce the most relevant playback stream, which for me means uploading HD files at no larger than 720p or 1280 by 720 Typically, I'll upload SD files, standard definition files, at either 640x480 for 4x3 video or 640x360 for widescreen. What about other encoding parameters? Well, that depends on the encoding tool. This is Adobe Media Encoder, and this is the file I'll be working with, which is my lovely daughter, Watley, excited about being on stage and shy on camera, as always. This is the H.264 format, and I produce all files that I upload into H.264. Now let's look at the presets that Adobe Media Encoder makes available to us. Now, it's a pretty advanced encoding utility, so you'll see Vimeo HD, I use Vimeo a lot, Vimeo SD here, YouTube SD, YouTube Widescreen HD, and YouTube Widescreen SD. Now let's look at those presets. Now, if I was encoding this for uploading to Vimeo, I'd start here, choose the Vimeo HD preset. It's encoding at 1280 by 720, which is what I want. And the data rate is around 4 megabits per second, with a maximum of 5 megabits per second. And typically what I do with a short video like this is just bump this up to around 10. That's close enough. And then, and then bump this up to around 14, which is the maximum. And that's the only adjustment I would make. I typically encode the files for upload at around 10 megabits per second if it's a 720p file. So if you have a Vimeo preset or a YouTube preset, and let's look at what Adobe does for YouTube, same thing, 1280 by 720. And again, here I would bump the data rate to around 10 megabits per second uh, in this file because it's only 15 or 20 seconds long. It's not that big a deal. And then I'd bump this to say 15. And those are the only changes I would make on the video side. And we'll look at the audio side in a second. What about SD? Now, if I'm starting with a 720 by 480 DV file, which, uh, which I still use quite a bit, I would look to the presets. And here we see a YouTube SD preset. And this is 640 by 480. Now, this is going to look pretty funky here. We can see the letterboxing. And that's one of the nice things about Adobe Media Encoders. You can kind of toggle between input and output or source and output by, by clicking over here. So I know, oops, I've got a problem there because I don't want black bars in my YouTube video or my Vimeo video. So here I would look at YouTube SD and I see, well, goodness, they've actually got a YouTube widescreen SD. And that's 640 by 360, which is the number that I want. And let's look at the data rate and the data rate is around 3. I'd probably bump that to around 5 megabits per second, and then bump this to maybe 10 megabits per second. And those are the only changes I would make to this preset if I was encoding for upload. Now, what if you don't have Vimeo or YouTube presets? Typically, what I look to there is, uh, is an Apple preset. Now, Adobe Media Encoder in this iteration doesn't have an iPad preset, but it does have a 720p Apple TV preset. And let's look at that. And again, that's 1280 by 720 and 5 and 7, I would boost this to, let's do it the easy way, click there, click here, and those are the only changes I would make. So if I'm encoding HD video, and I don't have a YouTube or a, or a Vimeo preset, I'll use the Apple TV preset, or a lot of encoding tools today come with iPad presets, and that's what I'll do for encoding. I'll just use that preset, bump the video data rate up to about 10 megabits per second, and then I'd be done. If it's SD video, here we've got Apple iPod, Apple iPhone widescreen video, and this is 480 by 270, which gives us the right aspect ratio, but it's not as big as I would like for upload. So I would change this to 640 by 360, and then I would boost the data rate into the, say, the 5 megabits per second range. And typically I'll, I'll double the target to get to the maximum. And that's the change I would make to the widescreen because it's 480 by 270, not 640 by 360. And just the uh, Apple iPod, Apple iPhone video 4x3 is 640 by 480, which is not what I want for this video because this is uh, 16 by 9 content. But if it was 4x3 dB content, I would just use this at that resolution and then bump the data rate again, 5 and 10. And then for audio, typically what I would do is I would use... 128 kilobits per second stereo, which should be fine for any file that you're going to upload. 
Okay, so let's get a preset that we want for this content. We'll go back to the Apple TV at 720. We'll bump this to 10 and say 14. We'll make sure the audio is at stereo 128. That's good. And everything else looks good. I want to name this file something memorable. Let's go Vimeo 1. That should be fine. Click Save. Got it on my desktop. Click OK to close the Export Settings dialog and then Start Queue to start encoding. <laughs>